arbitrage. What is it? How does it work? And how can you apply it to Bitcoin to almost make risk-free profits? Well, in this video, you're going to find out. Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Scott, and welcome to my channel where I'm here to help you learn how to trade, invest, and master your finances so you can apply that knowledge in the real world and multiply your money. And as I mentioned, in this video, I'm going to carefully walk you through how you can exploit a price discrepancy between Bitcoin, the actual coin itself, and Bitcoin futures contracts. And also, in case you want to see more trading or investing content after watching this video, you can also find me on Skillshare as well, where you can take my very in-depth classes on options trading or stock market investing. And I provided some links to some of the introductory courses of mine in the description of this video below. So be sure to check them out. And when you sign up for Skillshare using any of those links, you'll get a full one month free trial. Okay, so before we dive in here, I do also want to preface this video by saying that please still do your own due diligence after watching it, okay? What I'm going to show you in this video is only meant to demonstrate what this opportunity is with Bitcoin and how it works, and that's pretty much it. So it's still on you to do any further research or investigation, ask questions, etc., and ultimately decide if this is an opportunity you want to risk your money pursuing. And so now having said that, we can now move on to the first major concept you must understand to exploit this opportunity. And that is, what is arbitrage? And arbitrage is actually a pretty simple concept where you are buying a product in one market and selling the same or a similar product in a different market for a higher price. And therefore, you are basically locking in a guaranteed profit. So a very basic example would be, let's say apples are priced at $1 per apple in North America. And then in Europe, for whatever reason, apples are priced at $1.50. And so now what you can do to exploit this pricing discrepancy is you can buy apples in North America, then ship them to Europe and sell them for a higher price. And of course, as long as your shipping costs don't overwhelm your 50 cent profit margin, right, then you are technically making risk free money. And so then when we apply this concept to Bitcoin, in this video, you're going to see how you can buy Bitcoin in one market and then sell Bitcoin via a futures contract in a different market for a higher price and therefore lock in almost a guaranteed profit. And you'll also see in this video why I say almost guaranteed. So that's arbitrage. And then you must also understand, of course, what futures contracts are. And so very briefly, futures contracts are contracts or agreements between the buyer and the seller that obligates the two parties to exchange an underlying product at some point in the future for a predetermined price. And the price at which you either buy the contract or sell the contract for today, that is the predetermined price that you will trade the underlying product for in the future, which is the expiration date of the contract. So for example, if I bought a Bitcoin futures contract today for a price of $50,000, and let's also say the contract expires in six months, that means if I hold that contract for those six months all the way to the expiration day, then by that point, I must purchase Bitcoin at a price of $50,000 per coin. And then on the opposite side, if I instead sold a Bitcoin futures contract today for a price of $50,000, then that means once again, if I held the contract all the way to the expiration date, I must sell Bitcoin at a price of $50,000. So in a nutshell, that's pretty much all what futures contracts are. They're basically a way to trade some product in the future for a set price that you make today. And as you will see in this video, there is a discrepancy between the prices of Bitcoin futures contracts and the price of Bitcoin itself. And that difference is what allows this arbitrage opportunity to even exist. And so with all that being said, now we can jump on over to Thinkorswim here and I'll show you exactly how this works. Okay, let's get started here. And so what I have pulled up is a price action chart of forward slash BTC, which is the Bitcoin futures contracts. And just for your awareness, all futures ticker symbols start with a forward slash, and then you have the actual product code BTC, which of course is Bitcoin. And by default, when you do not specify a month code in the name here, it will automatically default to the current active month, which as of right now is the November expiration cycle. So basically what you're seeing down here is the price action for the November contracts. Now the next concept you must understand before I really break down how to take advantage of this arbitrage opportunity is the concept of contango. And the best way to explain what that is is through an example. So we'll come to the trade tab now. And up top here you can see a list of all the available futures contracts you can start trading. And since now these are individual contracts, you can also see a month code and also a year. So for example, this one is forward slash BTC, Bitcoin futures that expire in January. The month code for January is F and then also expiring in 2022. And you can also see that reflected in the actual expiration column, January 2022. 
And so the concept of contango simply stated is that when it is present in a given futures market, it simply means that the prices of all the futures contracts are greater than the spot price of the underlying product. And the spot price is simply the current trading price of, in this case, Bitcoin. Moreover, the further out in time you go, all these contracts are sorted by their expiration date. So again, the further out in time you go, the more and more expensive those contracts also become. So for example, if we come over here to Robinhood, because unfortunately, you cannot yet trade Bitcoin in Thinkorswim, although hopefully that feature is coming soon. But right now, the spot price for actual Bitcoin is 64,690-ish bucks. And of course, because the market is open right now, this number will be fluctuating. But given that number, now if we come back to Thinkorswim, let's take a look at the December futures contracts right here. And the last or most recent trading price for one of these contracts was actually 65200 And then if you go to the January contract, the last or most recent price that this one was traded for was 65730 even greater. And then so on and so forth as you go further and further out in time. Now, also because the November contracts here at the top are so close to expiration, these contracts are trading very, very close to the actual spot price of Bitcoin. And that's another characteristic of Contango. As you get closer and closer to the expiration date, the price of the futures contract will converge to the actual spot price of the underlying product. But that's basically Contango in a nutshell. Again, it simply means that the prices of the futures contracts are greater than the spot price of the actual product, and also the prices of the futures get more and more expensive further out in time. Now, Contango can exist for a variety of reasons. In the case for Bitcoin here, it's partially due to interest rates and also the cost to actually borrow Bitcoin. I'm not going to get super in-depth in all the details around that, but that is part of the reason. And it also exists because of the large upside speculation on Bitcoin. A lot of people are bullish on cryptocurrency in general, and then also because of Bitcoin volatility risk. And so now that I've explained what Contango is, that is actually where the arbitrage opportunity exists. So specifically what you can do is go out and buy Bitcoin. You're gonna go long on the actual underlying cryptocurrency, so you can buy Bitcoin at a lower price in one market, right? At the spot price, and then in the futures market, you're going to sell a contract further out in time because that will then allow you to sell your Bitcoin down the road at a locked in higher price. And that's the whole concept of arbitrage, right? You buy the product at a cheap price in one market, and then you can sell the product in a different market for a higher price and make the difference as your profit. So for example, if I was looking to sell maybe the March contracts expiring in 2022, at the time I'm recording this video, that's only about four months away, then right now, looking at the bid and ask prices for these contracts and going pretty much right in between, I could sell one of these contracts for around 66,100 bucks or so. So keeping that number in mind, let's say I go ahead and place the order. And then over here in Robinhood or Coinbase or any other platform that allows me to buy Bitcoin, I can then buy Bitcoin at the spot price of 64,430 ish bucks, significantly less. And then all I have to do at that point is hold those positions until the expiration date. So that means in theory, if I pull up the calculator really quick here, let me move this up. If I bought Bitcoin at a price of 64,430-ish bucks or so, obviously that's going to cost money, right? And then at the same time, I enter into an agreement by selling a futures contract that obligates me to sell Bitcoin by the March expiration date for a price of 66,100 bucks. That means I make a profit of 1,670 bucks per coin. And also one thing to note about these forward slash BTC futures contracts, the notional value of one contract is five Bitcoins. So that means if I buy a contract or sell a contract by the expiration date, I would have to either buy five Bitcoins or sell five Bitcoins. So therefore that means coming back to the calculator, I would multiply this by five and my total profit would be 8,350 bucks. And that's just in a few months, right? Of course, I could sell a contract expiring further out in time, maybe one full year, and the price of that contract would obviously be much, much higher. And therefore, my profit would be much, much greater. Now, of course, the main caveat here with using these contracts is you do need to have enough money to buy five full Bitcoins. That's going to cost well over $300,000, right? That being said, if you don't have that kind of capital, you can also instead trade forward slash MBT contracts. These are the micro Bitcoin futures. And the notional value of these contracts are 1 50th the size of the forward slash BTC contracts. 
So that means if you're buying or selling any of these contracts, then by the expiration date, you would have to either buy or sell one tenth of one Bitcoin, which right now would equate to about 6,400 bucks, much, much smaller. So depending on your capital limitations, you can definitely trade either one of these contracts, either the micros or the regular full-size Bitcoin futures. Of course, even with the MBT contracts, a notional value of still over six grand is not super, super small, but obviously they're much more applicable and useful to the majority of people. So again, just to summarize here, if you are trading the forward slash BTC contracts, then you would buy five full Bitcoins for each one contract that you sell. And then if you're trading the forward slash MBT contracts, in this case, you would buy one tenth of one coin for every one contract you sell. Now, one more final thing to explain before I talk about the risks of this approach is these contracts, both the micros and the full size contracts are cash settled. Now, what does this mean? Well, for example, if we go back to the BTC contracts, like I was talking about earlier, and again, let's say I wanted to sell these March expiration contracts. Well, cash settled simply means that if I were to sell this one contract and hold it all the way to the March expiration date, then my account here would either be credited or debited my profit or loss based on where Bitcoin ended up by that expiration date. Basically, we're just skipping over selling those five full Bitcoins and just going right to the end and dealing with my profit or loss as if I actually did sell those coins. So for example, let's walk through a whole scenario here. Let's say right now I go into my Robinhood account, I buy five Bitcoins at a price of 64,000, call it 500 bucks per coin. Just making the math a bit easier here. So I buy those coins, lock in that price, great. And then also in my TD Ameritrade account in Thinkorswim, I sell one of these futures contracts, the March one here, for a price of let's say $66,000. So that right there should in theory lock in a profit of 1500 bucks per coin because 66,000 minus 64,500 is 1500 bucks. Now let's say we fast forward time all the way to the March expiration date and Bitcoin has moved up in price to let's say 70,000 bucks per coin. Now, as I mentioned earlier, as the expiration date gets closer and closer and closer, the actual price of the futures contract will converge to the actual spot price of Bitcoin. So that means by the expiration date, this contract and also Bitcoin itself should be trading for basically the same exact price, $70,000 in our example. Now, again, because these contracts are cash settled, it's going to be as if I had to sell my five Bitcoins and fulfill my obligation on the contract. Now, because I don't actually own any Bitcoin in my TD Ameritrade account, what would I have to do? Well, let's pull up the calculator here to make this a bit simpler. In order for me to honor my obligation on this contract by selling five full Bitcoins at a price of $66,000 per coin, I must first have to go into the market and buy those five Bitcoins and I'll have to buy them at the spot price of $70,000, right? Again, this is all happening by the expiration date. So I buy the five Bitcoins at a price of 70 grand per coin, and then now I can honor my agreement and sell those Bitcoins at a price of 66,000. So therefore on the futures contract, I lose 4,000 bucks per coin. And again, just to make this clear, because these futures contracts are cash settled, I would not actually have to go out and buy the Bitcoins first and then sell them. That's what I would have to do if these were not cash settled, but because they are, this 4,000 bucks would simply get debited from my account and that's it. But of course, don't forget in my Robinhood account, at the same time I sold that futures contract in the first place, I also bought five Bitcoins at a price of 64,500 bucks. So now coming back to the calculator here, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen here, but don't forget this number, minus 4,000. So for my long Bitcoin position in my Robinhood account, again, if I bought those coins at a price of 64,500 bucks per coin, and then by the March expiration date, Bitcoin was up to $70,000 per coin, then of course I can sell them for that price, 70,000, which results in a profit of 5,500 bucks per coin. And then finally, I subtract the 4,000 bucks I lost on the futures contract, and the net effect is I still make that $1,500 profit. This was the initial price gap between the futures contract and the spot price of Bitcoin at the very beginning. I know this process can definitely be a bit confusing because these contracts are cash settled. That's why it's complex. And also because my Bitcoin is in a different brokerage account in Robinhood. But don't let all that complexity confuse you. The whole point of this arbitrage opportunity is simply to profit from the price difference between the futures contract and the actual spot price of Bitcoin. 
That is always going to be the net effect of doing all this stuff. Now, finally, in this video, I do want to discuss the risks of this strategy. Because like I mentioned earlier, this is an almost risk-free way to make money with Bitcoin. So now we're going to come over here to this article on FlowBank. I'll provide a link to this article in the description of this video. It's very, very useful, both in terms of explaining the risks of this strategy and also explaining just how it works. So I highly recommend you read this as well. And now if we scroll down a bit here, and here we go. And so there are two major risks that comes with this arbitrage opportunity. The first of which you can actually completely avoid, and that is counterparty risk. And this only applies when you are trading futures contracts with offshore or unregulated exchanges such as Binance, right? Because when you trade anything on an unregulated exchange, there's always the chance or the risk that the exchange itself could fail or that it could scam you and just take your money. That's definitely happened many, many times, especially in the crypto space. So therefore, you can easily avoid this risk by only trading futures and Bitcoin on regulated exchanges and also through approved regulated brokerage companies. So if you're in the US like me, then trading on Thinkorswim, Robinhood, Coinbase, all that stuff is totally fine. All those companies, all those brokerages are totally regulated and approved in the United States. And they only conduct transactions, they only conduct your trades on regulated exchanges. So that's the first risk. The second one, unfortunately, you cannot avoid. And the second risk has to do with the actual method that is used to settle the futures contracts. So as I mentioned before, the futures contracts are cash settled and more precisely, they're based on this BRR Bitcoin reference rate index. And this index is calculated on the basis of an average of the prices collected on different exchanges for Bitcoin specifically in the hour before the close, 4 p.m. So basically when it comes to the expiration date for any of these contracts that you're trading, again, in our example, it was the March contract, right? So the actual amount that your account is either going to be credited or debited based on where Bitcoin ends up by the expiration date, that depends on this Bitcoin reference rate index, which itself is an average of the price of Bitcoin collected from different exchanges. Now, normally that would not be a huge deal if Bitcoin was not so volatile. So basically the extreme volatility of Bitcoin results in a uh, tracking error, very high tracking error between the spot price and the actual index. And so on an annualized basis, this tracking error amounts to around 10%. So basically your long Bitcoin cash position, the value of that position can vary significantly from the benchmark or from that index. And depending how that variation plays out by the expiration date, that $1,500 that we calculated previously, that was the profit we were trying to make, right? That 1,500 bucks will also vary as well. It might actually be higher or it might actually be less. It all just depends on how the futures contracts are finally settled by the expiration date based on that index. And if Bitcoin is exceptionally volatile during that time, then yes, you will very likely see a difference in the final outcome of this arbitrage strategy, specifically a difference between what you calculated ahead of time, like what I showed you earlier, and the actual final outcome in reality. So again, just to reiterate from earlier, please do your own due diligence when looking into this strategy. Make sure you fully understand how these Bitcoin futures work. Make sure you understand how this arbitrage opportunity functions and all the risks that are involved and take the time to reach an informed decision on whether or not you want to risk your own money pursuing this approach. Personally, I do think this is a great opportunity given the small risks that are involved, but please still do your homework. And so with that being said, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and please let me know your thoughts or if you have questions in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you want to take some very in-depth classes on options trading or stock market investing, then check out my Skillshare courses. Links in the description of this video. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I drop new videos every single week and you don't want to miss out. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.